So what I wanted to do with this project today is just continue my project based learning ideas instead of working on you know, learning about every single topic within the uh, within a language and then writing code, just writing code to start. Um, so what we're going to do is build a calculator and the calculator is going to have a few functions, add, subtract, multiply, divide. Um, and you'll be able to get some, get a feel for how to use different types of variables, uh, pass them into methods, get responses back, all in just a few lines of code that we can use uh, just as a basic building block for uh, more detailed knowledge later on. All right, one of the topics that I wanted to cover um, with the calculator, one of the biggest ones is storing variables, storing values, sorry, in, uh, in variables and the different types that Golang has. Um, they try to keep it simple with just a few different ones, and we're just going to use uh, three different types today. We have, we're going to be using strings just to write things out to the user. We're going to be using integers um, to get input. We'll only accept integer values for our basic calculator. And then for division, since you cannot, an integer is a whole number. Hubby. Since an integer is a whole number, if you divide one by another, uh, you get, obviously, you know, if you divide one by two, you'll get 0.5, um, which needs to be stored in, uh, in Golang. It's a float. Um, so we'll look at how to handle that situation. So when I talk about project-based learning, for me, I really like to try to um, do something above my skill level and then learn about what I did later on, as opposed to learning all the basics first. Um, I'm kind of, that, that's what I've always preferred over the sort of academic route. Um, so that's what I've been trying to focus on getting uh, with all the videos that I've been doing, is just throwing you into something more than you know what to do with, and then you can look up the details about it uh, later and learn about you know, learn about some of the nitty gritty once you have a better understanding of how to use something and where it can be used. All right, so I have my workspace set up here and what we're gonna do is just create a very simple calculator. It's gonna take two numbers in from a user after the user tells, it, tells us what we want to uh, do and add them, subtract them, multiply or divide them, and then get a response back. So I'm gonna go through this uh, quickly. I have it already, um, I've already written down, tested it, but we're gonna, you know, turn through it as, I, as I, I'm gonna talk you through uh, building this out. All this source code is also gonna be available online. So you should be able to download it and just run it yourself uh, to begin with. You don't have to worry about copying it down or anything like that. So anyways, let's get part started. So for any Go pack, so for any Go program, the main, uh, the first thing you need to do is you need to have a package main and then a function main. And this is just the basic framework that you need for a Go program. It looks for the first package main and then uh, executes any code in the function main. So what we're gonna do here is format print ln. So this is how you print out to the console. The console, in this case, it could be, you could use a command uh, cmd command prompt. You could use bash if you're in uh, Mac or Linux. And I'm just gonna use PowerShell because I'm on Windows. All right, so print ln, I'm just gonna write something out, go calculator, so that we can see that, you know, we have it set up and it's working okay. I have it set up so that uh, if you install everything that comes default with Visual Studio Code, uh, it'll import things for you automatically. Otherwise, you'll have to import uh, everything that you're using or else Go will yell at you. So go build and just run what we have, which is calculator. This is what this is the output of the build and it just writes Go calculator and put an exclamation point. So what we need to do is be able to read information um, from a user. And to do that, we're gonna write our own function here that we're gonna call a number of times during our procedure. It's gonna be called read line. And we're going to do format. We're gonna print out a message to the user. 
And readLine is going to take in a message variable, which is a string. String just represents text, not numbers. Um, and it's going to return a string back. So whatever the user enters, we're going to return it back. So we'll print out the message that we want for this uh, prompt. And we actually want print without creating a new line so that you, know, you don't write their response on a new line. And the next one is var input string. So this is a variable where we are going to store this information. We're going to do format scan line. So this is a function that will, it's built into Go. I'm going to give it a reference to the input. And what it does is it will look at the line that was written by the user and then uh, return it to us as we, or sorry, create, um, set it to the reference that we uh, give it when the user hits uh, enter or there's a end of end of line. And if you're ever confused about what something does, you can hover over it. There'll be a pop up explaining it, or you can just search for it in Google. Google's an excellent resource that you really need to be using. Uh, whenever you're stuck, it should be the first place that you go. And then you can either go to the main documentation or you can find some helpful people on um, on Stack Overflow, which is how I figured out that there was a scanline method that I could use uh, for my purpose today. So what we've done here, we're going to print out a message to the user. We're going to save that. We're going to create an input variable to store that information. We pass a pointer to the scanline function, which is going to prompt the user to return uh, to type in some information. After they hit enter, we'll get that inform that information will be stored in uh, input, and then we'll return that information to be used uh, however we want. Okay. So now that we have that, we can prompt the user um, for an action or a command in this case. So I'm just going to do CMD. This is one way to do uh, an assignment as well as uh, instanti uh, creation of a, of a new variable in um, just one succinct uh, operator, read line. So when we run this method and return something, we're going to store it here and we're going to create this at the same time. It just saves you a line of code. So I'm going to type enter command. We're going to ask the user to do something, um, figure out what they want. A will be for add. We'll have S for uh, subtract. We will have M for multiply and D for divide. Okay. So the user will see this, they'll type something in, and just to show you that this is working, we're gonna stop here, do a format print ln and CMD. So we're just gonna write this out to the user right now, or to us right now. We'll run a build calculator. So we're going to ask, what do they want? If I do A, we'll return A. Let's say if I run this again and we type in just anything, it'll return it as well. And then the program will exit. Okay, so we need to make sure that uh, we only accept A, S, M, and D. There are a couple ways to do that. I'm going to use a long if statement. Uh, know that there's an alternative to using a, you can use a switch statement for this purpose. Uh, but we're just going to use an if because I want to familiarize, make sure you guys are familiar with uh, using if statements. So we'll say if cmd equals, so equals is a comparison, a double equals is a comparison, and single equals is an assignment. So we'll do if cmd is equal to a, then now we're going to do something here. Uh, let me just stub this out without putting any in logic inside of it. Else if cmd equals s, else if cmd equals m, else if cmd equals, what was that, d. And finally, if none of those satisfy, we're going to do format println invalid input just to tell the user that they've done something that the program doesn't doesn't exactly like. Okay, 
So with an if statement, what we're going to say is if cmd equals a, if this returns true, then we're going to execute this block. If that's not true, we're going to go to this one. If that's true, we'll execute this block, so on and so forth. And if none of this is true, we'll just do the last thing uh, that we have programmed, which is just else, whatever, we'll write out invalid input. All right, so now we need a new way to grab information from the user. And now we're going to run through a number of different things as I write out this code. Um, and I'm going to explain them as best I can. But hopefully, you know, just run through it, uh, use it a couple times, play with it, and, uh, and look up anything that you're confused about. So what we're going to do here is we're going to create a new function which is get user numbers and get user number numbers is going to return two values instead of just one go allows you to write out uh, a number of variables you can just keep continuing as, as many as you want but too many is is not not ideal so this will return two integers specifically integers and not decimal numbers num1 string equals read line. So we're going to use that function that we just created. First number. So we're going to ask the user for the first number, but we're going to get it back as a string. So it's going to be represented in text. We'll need to convert that text to an actual number um, in order to use it uh, inside our programming. We cannot just add, a we cannot treat a text we cannot treat text as we would numbers. They, they're different. And also integers are whole numbers. And the third thing that we're going to be using is floats. And floats are decimal numbers, essentially. They're, they're, they're a little more complicated than that. But for right now, we'll just consider them decimal numbers. All right, so num1, the actual number that we want, and I'll explain what error is in a second, string convert. This is another built-in uh, library that's going to be imported, and ATOI, and we're going to put in num one string. So we're going to put the string into this function. You can hover over it to see what it does. Oh, I have to import it first. So if I hit save, you can see now that format has become formatted string convert. So now we have two, and now I can hover over this. ATOI is the equivalent of parse int, just a shorter way of doing it. Uh, where we know that it's a base 10 number and we just want that number back out. So error, remember how I said that Go can return two variables uh, or more. Error is a common uh, system that Go uses to make sure, allow you to handle it if something goes wrong. Say someone doesn't actually put in uh, a number, they put in text or something like that. What we'll do, if there is an error, we will do if error is not equal to nil, then we will do format print line, and then we'll just let's just write out the error. Okay, and now we need to do this again for a second number. So we can just copy paste here, or you know you can get more complex if you wanted to make sure you don't repeat yourself, you can write a separate method for this as well. Um, but that's kind of overkill for our purpose right here, in my opinion. So second number, do two. So it's going to get two numbers back and then get two numbers from the user and return them from this method. So we haven't actually called this method yet, so we haven't actually used it. We have it written out, um, so we get ask for the first number, turn that number into a uh, turn that string into a number, and then ask for a second number, turn that one into that string that results into a number, and then return both those numbers so that we can make use of them. All right, so now. If we think about what we're going to do with addition, we're just going to add those two numbers together, and that is going to just be something like this. We'll do number one, number two is going to be, let's uh, create it and assign it, get user numbers. We'll call that method. Now, 
Now that we have those two numbers that the user's inputted, we will do, so sorry, we'll do results is equal, let's set this equal to num1 plus num2. Okay, just add them together. Now we have the result and we have to print the result back out. So again, this is an int. We cannot print an int directly to the console. It needs to be converted into some type of text uh, format. So we're going to have to convert it back before we send it back um, to the console or to the user. The way that we're going to do that is we're going to convert it to a string. So I'll just call it, uh, let's shorten this to s results. And this is going to be equal to format.sprintf d result. All right, so sprintf is a kind of a special function that allows you to quickly convert things to, you know, convert various things to strings. And this is a special character. There's a few places in Go that special characters are used. And to figure out what that is, you're not going to remember that, or at least I'm not, I don't do well remembering things. You can just go here, open up your favorite Firefox browser, because you're using Firefox. Sprintf, Golang. And anyway, by the way, I say that just because they, they do a lot with privacy. You can see this like Facebook container here. I really advocate for people switching to Firefox if you haven't already. Or at least trying it out. I mean, you, you know, it's up to you what you want to use. But I, I, I'm on board with Firefox now. Anyways, so integers are going to be D, this uh, percent sign D. And later on, we're going to use decimals. And that's going to be percent sign F. Okay, so now we have that, yeah, S result is now going to be in the form of a string. So now we can print it out to the front end. Len s result. Okay. So before we go and fill out the rest of this, uh, we're almost done here actually. Let's just go and test it out. And go build because we've added a number of things here. So I want to make sure that they're they're working. We'll do add because add is the only one that we've really um, used. So the first number will be one, second number two, and we get three out in response. Okay, so let's copy this over here. What we want to do is this is now subtraction. And go over here. This is now multiplication. So because if you add two numbers, two whole numbers, and you subtract two whole numbers, or you multiply two whole numbers, you can't get a fraction uh, out of that. So we're safe doing using integers here. However, now we have to consider. Um, what we need to do when we divide, because if we divide 1 by 2, we get 0.5, which cannot be represented as a whole number. And if you try to, it'll just, um, it'll actually just cut it off. So if you divide 1 by 2, you'll get 0. So what we're going to do here is we need to convert these to floats first. So we have num1, num2, get user numbers, results. Okay, so now we need this to end up being a float. And one way we can come, another way we can convert between, uh, another way that we can convert between numbers and, and different types is just typing in, so we want a float 32. So we do float 32 and then call it like a method and put in what we want to convert, which is num1. So this is just built into the language. It's not a usual thing that uh, it, yeah, this is built into the language and allows you to quickly convert. So float 32, num2, and then if we look, we're going to get a float. If I did this without this, I would do num1, num2. This will be an int. So if I didn't do that, um, it'll be happy to divide them for you and just cut off your decimal variables. That doesn't actually break anything, uh, but to actually get the float back, you need to first start with floats before you perform the, the, the mathematical operation. All right, so 
that actually completes what we were looking to build. So let's go test it out. We can do go build. Actually, okay. Hang on. Oh, I didn't use. I didn't print this back up. Format print ln. Yes. Now nope. I have to convert it. I'm getting way ahead of myself. Format sprint up. We have f results. Results. All right. Now let's take a look at what we got. Go build. Let's run it. We have. Let's do multiply. We have two. Uh, what's five, four? Eight. Okay, that works. Now we have divide one by two. Half. So. That pretty much covers exactly everything that I wanted to go over with just getting you know your feet wet with Go um, and kind of throwing you into things that you might not uh, may not have read about previously. That's the that's the way I like to learn. I don't like to do too much up front. I really just like to get into it uh, and at least have something down, even if it's bad. I just have something out there that I've done and I understand what I'm working with uh, before I try to learn about the details of it. So that's what this is intended to do. It is not the best program. Uh, technically, there are ways that this can break, and I hope you will uh, try it out and try to break it. Um, that's actually another important thing to learn about is how you know various ways that your code can break without you know you know that you may not expect. Um, so you know try to break this program as well while you do it, and and hope you enjoy.